Uh, we will go back into open session. We just completed an executive session for the purpose of collective bargaining. Um, we will actually discuss that later when we discuss the superintendent's mid-year, uh, what do you call it, mid-year status report on his uh, evaluation because it was for collective bargaining with the superintendent. It's kind of hard to collective bargain with one person, <laughs> but we are actually able to do that, which is fascinating. He's his own unit, he's his bargaining unit of one. So anyway, um, before we, <coughs> do we have any paraphernalia tonight or is to hand out to the departing members or will that be done at a, on? We do. We, we do. So when you would like to do that, sir. We do have I'd like paraphernalia. To, could we do that right away? Is that okay I with you? I think that would be appropriate. Because I know Sean wants to get out. <laughs> so tonight. That's what I said. For, for those for those watching, for those watching live and in color, uh, we have two members who will be, be who will be leaving us tonight, for the final time, and uh, Julie Kopke, who will be finishing out her three-year term, and Jerry Venezia, who will be finishing his 18 and a half years, approximately, maybe a little more, as a North Reading School Committee member. Um, since I'm the chairman, I'm going to speak first on these two. I, I just want to say Julie brought a, a great sense of passion to the school committee. Um, she very quickly became an effective member of this committee, um, even though I think some of us thought she might be a little bit of a pain when she started, but she turned out to be a great member. Her, her education good. and teaching experience have been, I think, um, a really great addition to the committee. And I really can't believe her family won't let her run again. But that's life in the in the big leagues. But I think Julie, you've been a great um, uh, a great and contributing member, and you do a great job of reading those donations. I don't know who's going to do that next year, but uh, we're sad to see you go. And we have a little gift for you here, Thank which you. you can open late. Look, it says the master teacher. Oh wow! All right. Cool. And then I'll move on to Jerry. That's it. Now, no, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Venezia, what can you say? 18 and a half years on the school committee, uh, basically involved with every building project and building, new building project and a renovation project that we have undergone in the last 15 years. Jerry was a one man, one man band, basically. We had a committee on the Batchelder, but I think Jerry was there every day because um, one, we selected a non-union contractor, and it was a non-union job. And every day there were pickets there, basically, from the union. And I know Jerry, Jerry was there every day checking that out. Jerry was there when the water pipe burst and the electricity went down. And then there was the high school project where um, I will forever remember our Saturday morning strolls through the <laughs> in, in, uncompleted high school project violating every rule that I'm sure the contractor had in place. We did have our hard hats on, but walking through there without anybody guiding us, <laughs> protecting us, we just went wherever we wanted. And it was great, it was great. And we, 12 years later, the project still isn't completed, but uh, it was fun. In, in addition to the 18 and a half years on the um, school committee, Mr. Venezia served on the secondary school building committee. Were you on the Batchelder? Do we have a bat? What do we call it? The elementary? Batchelder elementary school building. Elementary school building committee. He was a selectman for three years, which I think is what happened to him. Um, then he came here for 18 and a half. He coached all sorts of youth sports, got thrown out of many a game he coached, I assume. <sighs> Mr. Vanessi, is that correct? Several. Several. And, <laughs> and he's I just. Statute of limitations is run on that. <laughs> I think Jerry and Julie represent. Um, the backbone of a community. A community is built on its volunteers. And whether it's three years or 18 and a half years, if you don't have those volunteers, the community can't strengthen over the years. You need those volunteers. Um, I'm gonna miss both of them. I'm gonna miss Jerry telling us the story every three or four months about how he had a 4.0 his first year in college, 2.0 the first semester, 2.0 the second semester, how UMass was the best six years of his life, to get his bachelor's degree, and, and many others. Um, he's been a great contributor to uh, this town, and uh, I think he deserves 
a round of applause for his service to the community. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll give you this, but before you or Julie speak, I would like to give the rest of the members a chance to say something hopefully nice about you and okay. Julie. <laughs> and then we'll give anybody in the audience a chance to say something about you. So uh, I'll, go to, I'll go to Julie first, since you only have to talk about Jerry. You don't have to talk. Well, you can talk about yourself, too. So. Why? Because I like her. <laughs> well, no, because. Because I'm going to. Because. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to go to Julie first, because she can say something about Jerry, and then they can say something about. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Mrs. Kopke. So, Jerry, I appreciate the time and energy, and I, I understand that commitment. I, for me, it was, it's only been three years. I can't imagine the 18 years and the sacrifices your wife and your family has you know, allowed for you to be here and represent the community. And um, I wish you well. I think you'll find something else to you know, involve yourself in, and I appreciate your hard work for us. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. Jeanine? I didn't mean to laugh. I was just, your wife is probably like going, please stay I, on exactly. the school committee. Exactly. Stay on Actually, the school Actually, there's a lot committee. of people in my family didn't know I was on the school committee. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for 18. They don't know where I go when I leave the house. And I, uh, in fact, just I didn't know how to tell her that I wasn't running again because I could have got out of the house two, two nights a week without any questions asked. So. <laughs> Julie, it's been very nice to have met with you and, and served on the school committee. And you have brought a lot of good ideas and pointed out a few flaws. And so it's been um, good that you're here. I don't know why you're leaving. <laughs> it's good to have someone who is actually yes. rational, rational and has reason and can actually convince Jerry and, and me to do things. That's right. <laughs> that hasn't happened a lot over the years, so that's okay. very good. Thank you. So you've had a very good determination that, that helped us, you know. So thank you for having been here. And I hope that your family enjoys you when you are no longer rushing off to meetings. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Jerry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's your fault that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I apologize to the town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a pleasure serving with you. You wisecracks are always cute and to the point, not too cutting, so we're going to miss that, your smart wit. And um, it's been a pleasure serving with you not only on the school committee, but also on the secondary school building committee. Our Thursday mornings up at the trailer, no more. Oh, yeah. So made these past five years fly, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Who's going to accuse you of being late to every meeting now that Jerry's gone? <laughs> Are you going to miss that? No, John's already picked up. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry's She's wanted. passionate with it. Um, when Julie was running, I think, oh, this is going to be a pain in the neck. I, mean, I really thought she was going to be a, a I don't want to use the description, but, um, but she, she really contributed. I, I'm really sorry she's leaving. I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. I think that she's a valuable, valuable person to have on the school committee because she's a teacher, because she has the experience. Uh, she can bring historical perspective from other communities into the, into the meetings. Um, she did a tremendous, she's got perfect attendance. She didn't miss yeah, a single know. meeting, which mm -hmm. is hard to do when you have two kids at home. Um, she, uh, she did great work for us on the, the, the capital planning, whatever it is, dealing with uh, our friends on the board of selectmen and the finance committee and, and getting great results. Um, so I, I really do, I wish you were staying, not that I'm discouraging anybody else from coming on board, but, but you did a great job, Julian. Uh, you, you changed me from a, a detractor to a real um, a fan of yours. Great, thank you. Yeah. Scott. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know, I'll just repeat everything everybody else has said, but for me, you know, first year here, I think this has been a great experience, a great committee. Um, I think in particular, I've learned from Julie and Jerry. Julie's one of the only people on here that has kids still in the schools, the only one with young kids in the schools. So I think I relate to her on a lot of things, you know, and you know, we're probably more willing to listen to people talk about things like kindergarten than, you know, other other people on the committee are. Um, so, you know, I think it's been great to kind of learn from her. I'm not a teacher, and so I don't see things from the same perspective you do. And so I think it's been really useful to talk to you about, you know, from the teacher's perspective and from 
you know, a, a parent of young children who are a little bit older than mine, been through it. Like, it's been useful. I mean, like, I think that when I ran last year, I said oh, I, one of the reasons I wanted to run last year was just to get on this committee to specifically learn from you guys because I knew you weren't, you may not, you were considering not running again. And so, I mean, I, th I thought it was great to be able to learn from you, and I really appreciate that. Jerry, I mean, as a lawyer, I mean, I think you've done a lot behind the scenes with the negotiations and some of the budget stuff that people don't appreciate. And I've had a lot of conversations with you about that, and I've really tried to learn as best I could from that. Um, I mean, I, I think the most shocking thing is that you actually won election every year, and you actually got to go out on your own terms. I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's going to happen with me. I, I, it's nice that, you know, 18 years later, you can get a bowl rather than come to a meeting after the election about that. But, um, no, I mean, it's been great. I mean, and you're, you keep it light, you keep it funny, and... I don't know, I mean, the amount of work that you guys have both put in has been great. And so um, you know, I've learned a lot from you guys. And again, I mean, I think there were certain people that pushed me, but you were also one of the ones that every, when I leave meetings, you kept saying, oh, papers come out next week. And so, you know, it was good. And I had a lot of conversations with you beforehand. Mel didn't really want me to run. I was going to say, I never did, wanted so. you to run. And unfortunately, I, I, Jerry. I, I apologize a ton. I remember it's not in Janine. <laughs> so, you know, it's been great. Thank you, Scott. So thank you. Thank you. So anybody in the audience, I see Mr. Delaney here. I don't know if he wants to say anything. And if he does, I, I'd like, could you bring him a microphone? Sure, and then I'll have Mr. Bernard. Uh, Please. No, no pressure, Mr. Delaney, but we're bringing a microphone just in case you want to speak. He's so, he's so bad. He's so bad. He doesn't really like right. No, <laughs> oh, thank you. Sean Delaney, 7 Dicks Road. Um, I'm here tonight to thank the two members of this committee who are uh, going into retirement. Julia, I, I think you brought interesting perspective to the board. It's been touched upon because your, your professional role as a teacher, I think that was an asset to uh, this committee. And I think you contributed um, tremendously over the three years you were here. Uh, Julie and I have become Reading buddies on the uh, North Reading Get Fit crew on Saturday mornings and just listening to her tell her stories about what she does to get to meetings and juggle kids and activities. I was like, I, I don't know how you did it. I really don't. But um, Thank you for your volunteerism, the three years you put on. I don't think you're going to disappear completely. No. I have a sense that you won't, uh, <laughs> as, as I think anyone who steps up and volunteers and puts themselves out there. But you were a very uh, contributing asset to this committee, and I, for one, uh, from this town, uh, appreciate that. And thank you, and whatever you choose to do in the future. Yeah. Jerry, where to, where, where to begin? Uh, uh, let's see, I saw Jerry for the first time, I think, roaming around the halls in Woburn District Court, knew he was from North Reading, didn't know he was on the school committee, then got to know him a little bit as his uh, lawyering skills impressed me as I watched him in the courtroom. And then um, I chose to get involved myself in town. I went to see Jerry, he convinced me not to run actually for Board of Selectmen because his pal Phil Dardino was running for re-election. Oh, that's right. So he uh, talked me out of that. A little bit, and then I talked to more people, and I chose otherwise and, and ran for the Board of Selectmen. So Jerry started out as a mentor for me uh, when I got involved, and now we're uh, pretty good friends. And um, that's one of the things that grows out of getting involved in this community. You meet people like Jerry, uh, you become friends with them, and, um, and that will continue on. But uh, in terms of Jerry, your years of experience on the Board of Selectmen, on the school committee, for over 20 years. I don't know how any one person has done that and contributed in the ways that you have, as Mel had highlighted. Um, this community probably wouldn't have the Batchelder School if it wasn't for Jerry Venezia. I know there's a lot of other people involved too, but Jerry ran that, as Mel said. It was a non-union job, it was being picketed, but Jerry went down there with his consiglies and uh, took care of that. And, and look at that, that's, that's not just a rehab, that's, that's a new school we got there as well through the efforts of Jerry and others. And what we sit in today in this building here is in large part to Jerry's efforts. Um, give us what we paid for our, we don't care if you leave us with no money, just give us two new schools. Well, I think we're going to get there, Jerry. Uh, it's a long time in curry. I hope I like but, um, you know, I guess it's a long way of saying that I think Jerry's service to this community um, is unparalleled, unprecedented. I don't think we'll ever see the likes of a Jerry Venezia again in North Reading. Um, we will see, see people come out and volunteer and put their name out there and run. I know there's a couple of candidates here for school committee this evening. I wish them well tomorrow. But for the longevity that Jerry had and the energy that he brought with it, 
is just unparalleled. As I said, I was raised by a a uh, full-blooded Italian mother. I think that's where I got my negotiating skills. And then my mentor, Jerry Venezia, helped me hone my negotiation skills. And I know that Jerry continued fighting through today, in fact, his last day. I think he was, st was trying to strong-arm the, at least the finance committee, if not the board of selectmen, to give a couple more dollars to the school committee, as he should. But that's what Jerry is. Jerry's working this job as a school committee member to the last minute. And um, the town of North Reading, the generations of school children that have come through over the last two plus decades and the, the others that have come in the next several generations to come have Jerry Vinetti to thank for all the efforts he put in. Jerry, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Uh, Patrick. Thank you so much. Patrick Daly, the Assistant Superintendent. Just wanted to say thank you folks so much. Julie, um, it's been great working with you and I have to say like Two things that come to mind for me is working with you on the math program. We had a couple of meetings on that, and I think you really helped us shape that in the last few years coming here. Um, obviously, helping us to steer direction with digital learning and bringing in your expertise and, and your and your own background in that. So I really I think you've played a big role in that in, in just a few years here, but it's really had a big impact. So thank you so much, and uh, Jerry, just to thank you also. I've learned so much from from you um, working with you, and I really appreciated working with you on the. Uh, on some of the negotiation committees, I think what I've seen there especially is, um, you know, your ability to keep the kids in mind first, you know, and you're, and you're working so well to represent the needs of the, you know, the community and the taxpayers, but also what our teachers need, which benefits the kids. So, and I know you're a huge sports fan, and I just wanted to tell you, there's a thing called Monday Night Football. You might have forgot about that with all these Monday night meetings, <laughs> but uh, you'll be very excited to see that uh, back in the fall again. So, and the Patriots won since you've uh, been here on Monday night, so you might have missed some of that. So. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick. Thank you. Pleasure work. John, before I, I just I forgot to mention one of the things I appreciate learning from Jerry is how to be subtle. <laughs> John? <laughs> Wait, the Jerry and subtle don't often appear in the same <laughs> sentence, do they? For both of you, Julie and Jerry, I, I want to, on behalf of the district, express my gratitude um, to, to both of you for um, your years of service, your years of volunteerism. Um, we clearly are a better school district because of both of you being involved uh, in the school committee. Julie, uh, as Patrick said, it's only been a short time that you've been on the school committee, but I think your, your impact will be felt for quite some time. You were a very diligent, hardworking member. As it's been said, didn't miss meetings. Um, and when you came to meetings, you contributed, and I thank you for that. I'm not sure I'm really gonna miss Jerry. I, I've come to that conclusion. <laughs> Jerry, personally and professionally, and, and the, one, the one thing I'm happy about you leaving the school committee is that you won't be around to roast me at my eventual retirement. Oh, no, I bet if he'll anybody, be around. If anybody has ever been witness to, to Jerry emceeing a retirement party, it is, it is, it is unbelievable. It is great. And uh, um, people who have, have had the benefit of you uh, leading their retirement parties, I think have really enjoyed a very good time. But you have been a wonderful school committee member. You've been a great friend, Jerry, um, personally. I want to thank you for 15 years of very strong support that you gave to me um, for the time that I've been employed um, in North Reading. The building project stands, I think, as a, a pretty tall testament to your hard work, as, as it's been said. I really, you shepherding that project through with the help of other people, clearly, but your role was so active and so important, and I think clearly we are here. Um, in large part due to our efforts. So thank you very, very much for that. I know you won't be going away. I certainly hope we get to see you. Um, but the historical knowledge that you've brought um, to the school committee is something that's that's not gonna be easily replaced. Good luck. Thank, thank you very, very much. Thank you. appreciate it. Thank you. Jerry, would you like to? No, I just wanna thank everybody. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. And uh, I think together we have been able to get some things done. Um, you know, I see Sean here and he work on the Board of Selectmen and the Secondary School Building Committee. Um, you know, again, Tireless effort, tireless effort on his part. I've been really blessed to have great uh, colleagues on the school committee, including this committee, which I think is probably, and I think somebody said this the other night, the best committee we've ever had. No offense to anybody else, but I think it's a, as a working committee and a collaborative committee and a committee that works well and respects each other, this, is, this has been really probably the best year we've ever had. Um, <clears throat> I've said it before and I'll say it again that the school committee would like to take credit for any success that the school district has, <laughs> but it's not really us. Believe me when I tell you, I mean, we try to not mess things up, but it really comes down to the administrative team and I think our team is top notch, as good as anybody has. Uh, we have not only high quality people, but we have the continuity of having people in place for a period of time now and they do a tremendous job and that, uh, I also want to thank the faculty and the staff 
uh, because I really think that's what makes a school district really good, and uh, and we're blessed to have those people. So, again, I'm, I think uh, my wife keeps asking me, "Are you going to miss it?" And I said, "I don't know, but I think it was time to go." I I know those energetic new people that are coming on with new ideas and new energy, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, so again, it's been a pleasure working with everybody. I'm going to miss Mel. Mel and I have been partners in crime for 14 years. Uh, we always don't agree on everything. I usually let Mel vent and scream and yell. <laughs> and as I tell everybody, I wait for him to come in off the ledge. And then we basically work together to get things done. That's but true. The work he's done, I mean, not only on the, uh, on the new schools, but on the athletic facilities, the athletic fields, the athletic subcommittee, um, his, his knowledge um, and his, um, his depth of knowledge is, is unparalleled. I think he knows more than almost anybody here as far as um, you know, being informed about educational advancements and enhancements and things like that. So I'm going to miss him. Um, I know that uh, I may watch a meeting or two just to see how him and Buckley interact. Um, <laughs> that, that'll be interesting as the year goes along. I don't know if they'll make it for the whole year. I think we will. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> but again, to Janine and to Julie and to uh, Cliff Bowers and all the people I've served with, uh, John and Michael, again, I'll, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you guys make the system work, you make it go. And, um, and I appreciate all your support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Julie. To begin. Hmm. The commitment it takes to be on the school committee is a lot, and I've shared that with some of you over the past three years with people in the public. But I would never take back the three years. I think um, asking questions, proposing you know, different ways to go about things I think is important. Um, what kind of got me here was um, I was not in agreement with administration, with the school committee, and um, some people thought it was crazy to kind of jump on board, but um, it really opened my eyes to what it takes to represent a community, to listen to parents, to listen to teachers, to listen to administration, and hopefully make something work in a way that everything, you know, everyone benefits. Most importantly, the students in town. Um, and I'm not going away. <laughs> I, I could never go away. Um, so I will be tuning in and, and being here when it's important for me to be here and, and continue to voice my opinion and yeah, yeah. thank you Scott two, two other quick points I mean on Julie in particular I think she's really taken the role along with you Mel of, of being the advocate to the community you know I think she's taken that on a little bit and I think because she is one of the only ones that have kids in the schools she does bear a lot of comments from other people that you know some of the other people like my kids are so young people don't know me yet I think some other people's kids are kind of through the school system and so I think she's you know, really done that a lot. And before we close Jerry's email account, I'm just hoping we can <laughs> sign in to see how many unread emails oh. actually are after 18 and a half years. Yeah. I think we need to figure out what that number is before the account's deleted. We should print every email that he hasn't read <laughs> that sits on the server. <laughs> we won't be able to fit all the paper. One. And that's a good point, Scott. Just, you know, and I know I'm taking up some of our celebration time after the meeting, but um, Julie has been a, you know, she and I kind of tag team the social media um, over the last three or four years, and sometimes it, it's not really a fun thing to do because we get beaten up for it. But I think we've done our best to try to communicate with the community what's going on, and you know what school committee is voting on, and what we're meeting about, and and to reach out to administration. Exactly. When, you know. Right. When we see kind things. Of bridge right. that that gap. Right. That's the one thing the community should know is when we see stuff on Facebook. Most times, Mr. Bernard's made aware of it, and, we, mm -hmm. and then we can determine whether it's a real issue or not. So She'll still do that job next year, though. So Julie, yeah, she'll be there. Yeah, Media. Media. Well, thanks again to both of you. It's been uh, yes. tremendous dealing with both of you. Um, and with that, we'll get on to our agenda. Okay. Yes. Sure. Do you want another mic? Another mic. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Michael. Let, that's, the, for the, that's for TV. Yeah, yeah that's just, yeah. we need you the TV microphone, because we know. The ratings will go up. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm here. I've been meeting to come for some time. Um, some may know, some don't know. Um, my daughter's a junior here in the high school. Uh, her freshman year, she started to have some personal difficulties, and um, something that our family never thought we'd have to face. We, we faced it. She faced it. But I must say, um, with the collaborative effort 
from everyone at the school district that's assisted her from Jess Buckley to Bob Gannon. She's heavily involved in the bridge program now. I know you got your budget that's upcoming. I'm a strong supporter of this bridge program. If this bridge program didn't exist, or Bob Gannon or Jess Buckley weren't in this district, I don't know where we would be as a family. I don't know where my daughter would be. Um, I'm just happy to report it looks like she's going to complete her junior year on time. I have 14 more months and hopefully she will graduate and with all the support she gets here, I, I believe that she would uh, and will uh, and be successful. I, I just, it's amazing to me what they, with one student, what they have been able to do and keep her on track. I can't imagine a district of this size, how many students that they have to assist the way they've assisted my daughter and it's been nothing but high praise from my wife myself and my daughter and um, whatever I can do to support that program going forward uh, speak on its behalf I uh, expressed this to Mr. G Mr. Gannon recently that I'll go anywhere uh, because truthfully I think it's been a lifesaver for my daughter. So I just want to express that while I was here. Nice to hear, Sean. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have for a good night, Matt, Sean. And, and Sean, I think you'll see um, when you see the budget that we are we're continuing to beef up that area of student support services and counselors and, and things like that because it's just a huge need. It's a huge need. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Okay. So that was public input. If anybody else has anything they'd like to add that isn't on the agenda, motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> You know, please, okay. Okay, so we'll move on to student report. And tonight we have Samantha Galvin. Hi, everyone. From the class of 2020, correct? Mm -hmm. Sorry, we kept you here for so long. You probably wonder, we have two people leaving tonight, so that's why we were getting all gushy and stuff. But you're on now, go ahead. Even though it's only been a week since last meeting, there's still a lot going on, as there always is. Um, so several students attended the Wakefield Elks Students of the Month ceremony, and that included Jerlyn Kaitham Adam, Alexa Wilk, Nick Carpenter, Marissa Sabia, and Andrew DiPietro. And along with that, there are several other scholarships going out to the seniors. And the guidance department has put out a scholarship survey for the seniors, which is due tomorrow. And AP testing started this week. It um, started off this morning with AP chemistry and AP psychology in the afternoon. And the whole schedule for that is out for the next two weeks. And along with that schedule, the final exam schedule has also been released. Moving on to fine arts, Notorious, the school's acapella group has quite a lot going on for them. Um, they're hosting Sing Fling in the auditorium on Friday, May 11th which is for several a cappella groups. It's not a competition, it's more of a like fundraiser event for a cappella. And they also performed for Manchester Essex last Friday, May 3rd, and have two more performances coming up. On May 12th, they're scheduled to perform at Wakefield, also another fundraiser. And on May 17th, they're fundraising in Hamilton Wenham for singing for them. Both Notorious and Maskers just helped put up a like gymnastics equipment at Shriners Auditorium as a fundraiser. So they go and they put it up and set it up really quickly. And then next Friday, so the 14th, they'll be tearing it down. So they set up the equipment and they get a lot of money for the arts for that. Um, as far as athletics, a lot of the sports teams have been doing really well. Varsity softball still remains completely undefeated with nine total wins. Girls track won both their meets, and the boys are doing very well one for one. One for two, sorry. Boys lacrosse is also doing very well. They only have one loss and four wins. And yesterday, they won against Nantucket, leading 14 to six, and that win secured their spot in the playoffs. Um, elections for next year's class officers and student council representatives are also coming up. The forms for that, I believe, are due the 15th, and the elections, they stagger them by a week for each grade, so those are also coming up. Um, several student council members attended Project Bread's Walk for Hunger on Sunday, so they walked 10 miles to show their support for the cause, and they, they um, 
help raise money while they're there too. And this week is Teacher Appreciation Week, which Student Council also runs. So they show their appreciation and gratitude to the teachers for all that they do this entire week. And May 18th, the school's Red Cross, Red Cross Club will be hosting a blood drive in the gymnasium. For my student war work um, this week, I decided to bring a essay which I wrote for my Spanish class. It was part of a Spanish test. So basically, we had to use commands in Spanish and we had to kind of write a letter as if we were writing to a exchange student that was coming here and kind of tell them what they would do if they were in America and how they would get to know people. And it was cool to kind of use like our experiences and applied that directly to the language. And it kind of made you think about how maybe stuff we see as normal, people from other cultures don't see as normal, so you still have to explain that to them. So it was a pretty cool activity to put your mindset in someone who isn't from here. Great. Any questions for Samantha? What does she think of Jerry? <laughs> it's amazing how much goes on in a week at the I high school. That's right. It's only one week, right? Yeah. yeah. That's true. Okay. We're all set, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Samantha. Samantha. You might need to stay because I, I don't read Spanish. <laughs> I think, Mr. Bernard, you'll get her paper. I too, will. Right? Okay. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, Samantha. Okay. Next, we have uh, continued business. We actually had an SSBC meeting. We had an SSBC meeting. And uh, not a lot lengthy meeting, but I guess there is a somewhat of an update. I don't know if Janine, you want to start, or Jerry, or John, or whomever wants John, to. Watch it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I think um, I think one of the things that was was most important that we talked about at the meeting was to um, pave the access road at the Batchelder School site to joining with that joins the the high right. school site as a road that had suffered significant uh, damage when the old high school was torn down. Um, because that's where much, much of the heavy trucking took place was to, to remove the debris from the from the old high school when it was raised, and I think that was um, that was a you know a, a significant achievement on uh, the meeting last last week. Um, so that project we anticipate will start um, paving. I, I I've been in touch with the town engineer, the new town engineer, about um, um, just some notif early notification of that because we have a lot of activities taking place in early June, graduation. Um, field days for the batch elder school that will be making their way over to um, to the high school site so um, high school field site so you know we'll we'll monitor that I don't have an exact date for when that will take place um, John is that the, <coughs> the road in front of the housing yeah, yeah in front of the court, yeah. court. Yeah. yeah so it's if you a <coughs> a couple of yeah. speed bumps <coughs> on there that really need to be dealt yeah. with right Something it's right when you take kind of like a, yep. a, when you take the turn from the batch and then in front of Peabody court leading to the newer parking lot it's that stretch of roadway there that's probably a couple of hundred feet, would you say? Yeah, yeah a couple yeah. hundred feet. And it accesses the area. baseball, the entire mm -hmm. athletic Yeah, really. yeah. It's in, it's in, and there's a, they also were gonna, are going to remove some fencing in that right. area. Right, the too. fences, and they're going to do the sidewalk. No longer too. needed. Um, right. Trying to think, what else? What else was talked about? That was about it. It was a yeah. short meeting. That yeah. was a pretty significant piece yeah, of it. There's nothing further to report as far as the closeout. I yeah. gave some updates on some projects that were outstanding. That weren't right. They weren't really punch list items, but just some updates on some things that the school department had been working with um, right. at times with, with um, people from the project, the principals of the project, to resolve. But I think, you know, we've... We've continued, I think, to learn a lot about the operations of this building, which are very sophisticated, as we all know. Um, but um, I, I think the progress has been good, um, and, 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 and I think it's been productive. Anything else? Janine? I got no. Jerry? No. Okay, thank you. Next, we have um, Steve McManus here from CPAC, and we have Cynthia Conan, our Director of Pupil Personnel Services, with Steve. So, Steve, thank you for your patience, and we'll turn it over to you. Oh, can we get him, um, Mike? Can you get oh, a yeah, microphone up here? Sorry, Michael, I'm making so that you do a lot of work. Just for the cable. So right. You're not, not going to hear anything different. Oh, okay. Just for the right. cable television. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, members of the school committee. For the past three years, I've had the pleasure of collaborating with Mr. Stephen McManus, our CPAC president. Um, together, we have established a strong partnership between the CPAC organization and the school district. 
I really want to take this opportunity to publicly thank you for allowing me to be part of the planning and coordination of all the events that we've done. I really appreciate that, and it's helpful to me in my role as director of PPS. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. Thank you for the collaboration. Absolutely. Um, I'm very excited and looking forward to next year and continued collaboration. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Steve McManus. Thank you, Cynthia, and thank you, uh, members of the school committee, for having me back again. Uh, my, as, as Cynthia said, my name is Steve McManus, and I'm the, the president of the North Reading Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Uh, I have two boys. Uh, Patrick is in fifth grade at the Hood, and Matthew's in fourth grade at the Little School. I'm here to today to talk about who we are, how we've been active in the past year, and what our goals are for next year as an organization. Uh, the CPAC's duties are include, but are not limited to, advising the district on matters that pertain to the education and safety of students with disabilities, meeting regularly with school officials, participating in the planning, development, and evaluation of the school district's special education programs, and advocating for the appropriate supports and special education services necessary to meet the individual needs of children with disabilities living in the district, and to ensure that each child receives the individualized supports and special education services that they are entitled to under applicable uh, federal and state laws and regulations. Students that fall into these categories have been determined to have a disability and that the disability requires uh, special education. So I'd like to just walk through our year of programming uh, and events. We've had a busy year and continue to serve as a resource not only for the special ed community but for the general population as well. You know, to any of our programs are not uh, invitation goes out across the entire district, not just to uh, parents and guardians of special education students. A focus of our group is to provide programming for a wide range of ages and concerns. And so our first program this year was held the first week in October. And for the first time, we started off the year with just a, a simple meet and greet, uh, which was an informal discussion with no outside speaker. We found over the years that uh, many special education parents and guardians do not know exactly what a CPAC is uh, or that we even exist in the first place. Uh, so we wanted to provide a forum to introduce parents, uh, introduce ourselves, and to provide an overview of what we're about and outline the other workshops we had planned for the year. Uh, there were some really good conversations, and a big takeaway for us as a CPAC board was that parents are really looking, in addition to the programming, really looking for opportunities to network and meet with other parents um, in a similar situation. You know, it can be very isolating uh, to uh, be a parent of a special education child. So that feedback came through loud and clear. And so for the rest of the year, for our programming, you know, uh, we included a half an hour to an hour of just open door networking uh, that, that parents were invited to. So if a speaker started at seven, you know, we'd open our doors at six or 6.15 to allow parents to come and mingle and just talk about resources and, and, and just connect with other folks. Uh, in November, we hosted a workshop by Terry Farrell, the project director for the Autism, Resource, Autism Insurance Resource Center. This workshop covered information regarding autism insurance in Massachusetts and included information about mass health uh, how to figure out coverage and eligibility, premium assistance, and navigating the health connector. Uh, this is an incredibly complicated topic and generated lots of great questions. And uh, we're planning on having Ms. Farrell back again because there was plenty of information that we didn't cover um, and she volunteered to, to come back. It was a, a well-attended meeting. In February, we held our required basic rights and special education workshop uh, with the support of uh, John Bernard's staff in the PPS department, our CPAC is a paid member of the MassPAC, which is a statewide organization that provides information, training, and networking opportunities to, uh, mass to CPACs within Massachusetts and professionals who we work with. As part of the membership, we had a speaker from the MassPAC present this workshop to our group, uh, and the question and answer session was again really good, and there was a lot of good knowledge shared at this presentation. Uh, prior to the speaker, uh, Cynthia Conan and her staff, Gina Sacco, Elementary Coordinator for Special Education, Maureen Ryan, Secondary Coordinator for Special Education, and Andrea Barlow, Team Chair for the Middle and High School, uh, came to the group, introduced themselves, and took some time for a uh, question and answer from the parents that were there. So special thank you to Cynthia and her staff for volunteering their time to come in the evening and, uh, and support our group. 
Our last speaker of the year was in March, and this was another speaker from the same organization, the MassPAC. Uh, the workshop covered effective, communi effective communication and the IEP, Individualized Education Plan. This was a workshop designed for parents and professionals and included communication skill techniques and pitfalls to avoid to help parents engage effectively in the IEP process through clear and concise communication. Uh, and prior to our speaker that evening, uh, Superintendent Bernard volunteered to come and speak to our group. He gave a history of his career in education, the changes he's seen in special ed throughout his career in education and also in North Reading, in North Reading's uh, commitment to special education programming. So thank you again to Superintendent Bernard for volunteering to, uh, to come to our group. Uh, you know, part uh, and a very important part of our mission and what we want to be involved in is collaborating with uh, the North Reading community with, with programming and topics related to special ed. Uh, and probably the best highlight of that is our continued involvement with the North Reading Top Soccer Program, which is now in its fifth season in the spring, and they actually do winter soccer now. Uh, Top Soccer is a community-based training and team placement program for young adults, I'm sorry, young athletes with disabilities organized by Youth Soccer Association volunteers, uh, most notably Joe Ladosky. Uh, the program has 37 soccer players who probably wouldn't be able to play soccer if it wasn't for this program, and each of those vol players has a volunteer buddy to help them out, most of whom are North Reading High School students. Typically, there are 40 to 45 buddies each week, and this program has grown to include students from Lawrence, Reading, Stoneham, Danvers, Medford, Lin Linfield, Middleton, Methuen, Andover, and Derry, New Hampshire. So they've really cast a wide net very quickly. Uh, the collaboration has worked out really well for all involved, and we're looking forward to continuing to work with uh, not only Top Soccer, but other members of the North Reading community who want to uh, start programming like this and, and, and work, with, uh, work with the special ed parent group within town. Yeah. So this past March, Vicki Labriola, the secretary and co-chair of the CPAC, attended the Federation for Children with Special Needs uh, convention in Boston. I went last year, so uh, Vicki went this year. It was a, a one-day conference titled Visions of Community, and the, the, her attendance was paid for by our membership in the, in the Mass Pack that I referenced earlier. Uh, she went to three workshops. Uh, one was about inclusion, and inclusion... Um, is when you know some students on IEPs will be given a chance to be included with the general population um, of the school and how to do it properly or properly uh, beyond the classroom walls, maximizing the family's role as the first teacher and problem solving our way to positive behaviors. So um, Vicki asked me, said that some of her takeaways were focusing on community outreach efforts to keep CPAC relevant and involved. And back to what I was saying about the Top Soccer, that's a great program. Or, example of that. Uh, the CPAC can be something to most people, can't be everything to everybody, but we can do our best to be relevant in some capacity to everyone. Looking at what the district does right to learn how to successfully what, address what can be impro improved. And uh, you know, when Mr. Bernard came to our, our meeting, he asked for op honest and open feedback about what the special ed parents liked and what we wanted to see as improvements. And so that was, I thought, very uh, um, forthright of you to ask that question and was really appreciated. Um, embracing the newly diagnosed uh, students, finding ways to connect and, uh, you know, over the years I've found that the majority of our programming is attended by parents and guardians of a, of a newly diagnosed child, you know, sort of uh, you're thrown into something that you never really thought you'd be thrown into and the, and the, and the CPAC really wants to be a resource and available to, to parents and guardians in that uh, situation. Um, Vicki has also uh, this year started to run the North Reading CPAC Facebook page. Uh, we got this idea from surrounding towns that we collaborate with and you know on that page Vicki shares information and events uh, including the information she learned at the MassPAC conference. Um, the public's not able to post to the page so Vicki runs the whole thing uh, and we have 90 plus followers so far in a very short amount of time. Uh, in addition she posts uh, information about Autism Awareness Month and uh, this month being May, the focus is going to be towards uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. So she's very active with that and really, really good at it. Um, our programming for the year actually just ended this past week. So this timing of my talk is, is very good. Uh, on Thursday, May 2nd, and then on Friday the 3rd, we hosted a, a showing of the movie Angst, 
uh, raising awareness around anxiety. And the event was funded in collaboration with uh, the school district and also the community impact team. So many thanks to those organizations for their support. Uh, the movie is intended to start community conversations about anxiety and provide tools, resources, and hope for uh, an issue that addresses all of us to some extent. Vicki Labriola also organized this event, uh, reached out with the producers and coordinated screenings and uh, also moderated a group discussion after the movie was shown. Special thanks to Vicki for organizing this, organizing this event. Uh, we've been wanting to do uh, uh, a movie of something like this for a while and it took us a couple years to find one that we thought that we would want to get ourselves behind and sponsor and it was thanks to her tireless efforts that it came through. Uh, included in, so what we did was we showed the movie and then Vicki, the movie was 56 minutes, which less, left us an hour to, for Q&A from uh, both parents and there was some students who came to the showing as well that the, the screening is intended to be shown um, to students. Uh, so included in the panel discussion that I'd like to thank were Dr. Uh, Jacqueline Mansfield, the school psychologist for the Hood School, Mike Rosa, coordinator of the School Counseling Services for North Reading Public Schools, and Lindsay Gervino, a licensed school adjustment counselor. Many thanks to them for volunteering their time, and it certainly generated a lot of good Q&A uh, on, a, like I said, on a topic that is very common. And, and one of the big takeaways that we had from this event that parents suggested was, uh, you know, thank you for, sh for hosting this and showing this, but uh, we'd love for more students to be able to see this movie and perhaps weave it into a school day. And we had talked about that as a group, as a CPAC and collaborating with John and his staff. Uh, you know, by the time the movie was uh, sort of green lighted, for lack of a better phrase, it was probably mid to late January and it just, we didn't quite have the logistics to pull off and there's issues with number of times you can show the movie with the screening. But, you know, I think definitely, you know, something that we're already talking about doing is finding a way to try to incorporate it into the school day next year. Um, so um, looking forward to those discussions and, and finding out if there's a way to do it. Um, in addition, you know, I, I continue to work with parents in the community will come to me with uh, um, questions about their rights as special education parents. If there's a, a situation that maybe they didn't feel like was handled to their liking, they can ask me about it. And, and Cynthia and I work collaboratively with that as well. Um, Cynthia also asked me to come to a, a presentation by a group that, a uh, software company that developed an app called Show My Day. Uh, so something that's very useful for uh, many kids in the special uh, education population is to have a visual outline of your day. Um, and historically this has been done by like a, you know, a schedule which is kind of, uh, it'll have like the hours of the day and then the old school way is to use Velcro, like so for Monday is different than Tuesday and so you swap out, you know, G -E gym versus art and with Velcro tabs and so this app is designed to be able to do all that electronically. So she asked me to come both as a parent as, and as a member of the CPAC for, for input on that. Um, last but not least, I'd certainly like to thank uh, Superintendent Bernard and his staff for their support. Uh, I attend the monthly meetings of the Superintendent's Parent Advisory Council. Um, and John and his, his staff, as, as we've indicated, have been nothing but supportive. Um, in addition, I'm, I'm very happy to say that we have a collaborative and pos positive relationship with Cynthia and, and the rest of the PPS office. Uh, special thanks to Cynthia for her time and her tireless efforts. You know, she comes to every one of our workshops. Um, and, you know, I always appreciated that, but at the last workshop of the year, we had a, a parent come from a neighboring town. It's actually pretty typical for us to draw parents from surrounding communities. Sometimes it's easier to go and ask questions of a speaker about rights in education or how do I handle conflict with the school district. If you're not in your own school district, you can, you know, if it's, it, you don't want to necessarily ask around people that you know. And this was the meeting that Cynthia was at and John spoke to and this woman said to me, you, your superintendent and your director of PPS are at our, your meeting? I said, yeah, it's great. We work really closely with them. And she said, we don't, we don't get any support from our, our director of P our director of PPS has never been to one of our events and you know certainly the superintendent has never volunteered to come out so gave me a whole new level of appreciation for uh, for John and his staff and Cynthia going above and beyond their responsibilities to us certainly as a group so um, I want to close by by thanking them for that and certainly looking forward to another uh, uh, good year next year we have some speakers that I'm already kind of working on scheduling and lining up 
you know, last year we had a group come out that does um, a financial advisor in town whose specialty is uh, doing financial planning for uh, special education students and their families. He wants to come back out and we had another group approach us about doing a, a workshop for siblings to support siblings of special ed students. So those are some of the ideas that we have already in place for next year. So every year I say to myself, I'm not going to wait till the start of the school year to map out the rest of the year. I've got to start doing this during the summer. So I'm trying to stay ahead of the curve this year. <laughs> I, I want to thank Steve for his great leadership over the last few years in this committee. It's taken a huge leap in terms of both, I, get, I think, its influence on the school department and helping us to see where we need to make changes and also on the community. So I, I really want to thank you. I think you've been a, a great vocal leader for the special education community. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. If anybody else has any questions or, or comments. No, I, I'll just echo what, what Mr. Webster said. And uh, Mr. Delaney said no one's going to beat the 18 years. I have a feeling Mr. McManus is going to approach that. <laughs> I know he's been here for a few years already, and it, it is a great program, program. I went to some last year. I wanted to go to more this year, but I, you know, I think it's, uh, it's important. And, it's, and I like that you heard from people that they wanted a chance to come together, and you're trying to incorporate that into it as well. I mean, I was here last year when you spoke, and I mean, it's just great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I also want to echo, I think what, what Mr. Venezia said earlier was, you know that you know you can't look at the school committee and say what a great what a great school district we have. It's it's the administration, and I think Cindy is Cynthia is a key part of that team. And when you see tonight in our budget what we're um, adding for new positions, which we worked really hard to add, a big part of it is um, you know Cynthia's influence and input into that budget and and the kind of positions we need to help serve uh, the always evolving student population. It, you know it's different every year, and you got to have those positions filled. Everything from you know, first grade reading teacher to a 12th grade adjustment counselor. And so, you know, that, that movie angst, I think, gets to the whole need for adjustment counselors and, and psycho psychologists in, in the school district to help those kids get through the day, never mind the week or the year, get through the day. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I thank you for your, um, for your support. John? Mr. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Just a real quick comment. Uh, Mr. McMahon has heaped a lot of praise on the district and, and its personnel, but I, I would be remiss if I did not say that it is a pleasure to work with Steve. And, and his uh, positive nature and, and um, his collaborative style uh, means a lot to us, too. So it, it, I think we are as successful as we are to the extent that we are successful is because of the relationship um, that we have with you and the CPAC. So you are leadership and your positive nature is not to be overlooked. So thank you for that, Steve. You're a pleasure to work with. Thank you. Thank you very and much. And I do also want to acknowledge, you did, Mr. Webster, and I thank you for that, but acknowledge Cynthia Conant, who has done a very nice job in her role. Um, you're, you're finishing up on year three, year, year three now, and it's uh, she's really, I think, the, the, the movement has been very positive, and I thank you for that I publicly. Agree. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, at this point, we'll move to um, the budget. She came for you. Oh, oh. Chris came for you. Hey, you want to have, entertain a couple more comments yeah, from, Mr. Yeah. from people that came? Uh, if, if there are a few more comments on Mr. Venezia, I, I will entertain them <laughs> well, now. Well, depends and, on what they have. If anybody would like to say something about anybody out there, like to say something about Mr. Venezia before. As a teacher in the district, but now as an administrator. And I have to tell you, the thing that has really struck me the most was I grew up in a city where <clears throat> the school committee did not always play nice in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. And it was televised, and as a teenager, I can remember seeing it on TV and thinking to myself how embarrassed I was by how these people were interacting with each other. And mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was really kind of embarrassing to me as a teenager, and it stuck with me. And so when I came here and I got to know the school committee, and I thought to myself, well, this is different because I've never met a more collaborative, caring group of indiv individuals, and I just had to come back up to North Reading today, tonight, just to say thank you for all you do, for all of you, not just for Jerry and Julie, but for everybody. I, I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So well, That's appreciated. Much appreciated. And I see Mr. Bowers, he, he made a he couldn't even be on time for Jerry and Julie, but we'll let, we'll let him speak anyway. I just didn't get the message. Oh, you didn't get the <laughs> I didn't realize it was 6. Oh, okay. I thought it was 6.30. Okay. And I was a few minutes late because I went to the selectmen's meeting <laughs> in, ahead of time. 
uh, I, having spent nine years on the committee, I can't imagine anybody spending twice that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I, I truly appreciate the, um, the, the good connections and the com camaraderie between the various members and the, um, the, the smooth operation. It really uh, it was never really any hostile environment. And uh, that, uh, I spent nine years at it, and, and it was because of uh, the other members who had been there for longer than that that uh, we probably had the, the legacy that we had to keep up. Uh, and and Julie has been a, was a was a real addition to the to the group. I'm sorry to see her leaving so soon, exactly. uh, but uh, I, I can understand precious uh, people who uh, raising small families and and uh, uh, young families and uh, and who have uh, uh, other things that they do other than just being retired. You know. And, <laughs> uh, but I I truly appreciate the and I'm sorry I was late. That's okay. Missed Go ahead. all of the other. You, it's usually Janine that's late, so you know we'll I'll give stay you, late. We'll give you a pass. I'll stay, to, stay late to make up for it. All right. About that. Well, thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. Thank, thank you, very, you very much. All right, we're going to turn it over now uh, to Michael Connolly and the budget, which we're going to vote on tonight. Great, Mr. Connolly's promise will be extremely brief tonight, yes, so we I can will, um, get out to our post-game celebration. Hitting the highlights this evening. So I have, a, I have a relatively quick PowerPoint, which I'll move through pretty quickly. Um, now, some information did just change. So I tried to hand out a supplemental handout. I worked on it pretty quickly based on some of the information that just changed as of the meeting at 4 p.m. today. Um, but I, I hope that this evening will certainly bring about a conclusion to a very kind of long process. But I think we're certainly made some, uh, some tough decisions, but uh, over the last you know, week or so to to recommend a budget uh, for approval this evening. But just to bring as a reminder, um, if you go back to where we kind of started with our recommended budget that we presented through the months of March and April, we were originally requesting a budget of an increase of 5.3%, 31,198,533 was the appropriation we were looking for in FY19, which was a little bit above level services. Um, Based on the final revenue plan, really actually as of 4 p.m. today, um, we, we have a final revenue uh, school department budget guideline from the finance planning team and the finance committee of 30 million seven forty six zero forty seven. That would be a 3.8% budget increase over fiscal 2018. So <coughs> the amount from where we started, which was the uh, previously recommended budget, is $452,486. So this list here would essentially um, balance the FY19 budget and uh, essentially make the changes that would be needed from our recommended budget down to a, a, um, a balanced budget for fiscal year 2019. Now everything kind of above the line is sort of either new, new initiatives that we had in the, in the recommended budget, um, some new positions through NRPS 2021 that we would recommend you know, not, not be funded to, to meet the, the balanced budget. And then the first three items are things we've been talking about that were possibilities um, in terms of extraordinary relief funds through the state. We, we did qualify, we did find that out over the last 10 days or so, which was positive news. So we're able to increase that offset through that additional revenue through the extraordinary relief program with the state by $130,000. The circuit breaker program, again, along the same lines of um, helping uh, you know, offset our special education out of district tuition budget. Uh, that allotment was originally approved at 65%. We now have good information from the House and the Senate and the House Ways and Means Committee that that will be funded at 70% in fiscal 18. That a lot of this carries over into next year. So we felt comfortable making a $30,000 revenue adjustment um, there. And then the third revenue adjustment there would be under full day kindergarten. We had originally, because of the lower enrollment, uh, backed off on our um, revolving account offset for full day kindergarten through the tuition based full day kindergarten program. We uh, will take, we feel we do have some carry, additional carryover funds available to kind of level fund that, that offset amount and make the adjustment back up by $30,000. We also have seen some students that were initially registered in the half-day program, 
indicate they'd like to go into the full day program so that has a, um, generated some additional revenue so we felt comfortable making that adjustment um, we originally had 3.9 FTE uh, positions we were looking to fund one was the 0.5 reading teacher um, through NRPS 2021 so unfortunately we're recommending uh, at this point that we would not be able to fund that position the other was a 1.0 academic high school teacher to help address the student teacher uh, you know class size ratios at the high school level which we've been trying to achieve for a number of years uh, this would back off a 0.4 FTE of that and we, we would fund 0.6 of that and, and I'll, I'll break down those positions the new positions in a moment so everything kind of below this line is our is the administration's attempt and I believe that you know the school committee at their budget workshop was in agreement of you know changes we would make to our expense budgets um, that would essentially help balance off the budget We've, we looked at these as the least harmful impact with a priority in protecting the the, the the educational classroom and the curriculum and the least impact on the overall student you know experience for the for the students um, some of these were things that we were trying to restore we were trying to restore a $5,000 line item to help offset the food service program in the amount of $5,000 that's not something we don't have now and we would we would uh, eliminate that that amount the next two small capital equipment and extraordinary maintenance again trying to restore items that were reduced in the past back to prior year levels we'd have to hold off on doing that uh, school and district operating budgets we actually re originally recommended thirty thousand um, dollars a little over thirty thirty thousand dollar as a restoration this would eliminate pretty close to not all of that amount but but a, a good amount of that you know, 20,000 of the $30,000 restoration amount. So there would still be some level of restoration achieved. The next two um, are staffing uh, changes. We do have a, um, you know, through attrition and through retirement, some special education paraprofessionals, um, you know, moving on from the district at the end of the school year. Through our analysis with the administrative team, we feel like we could absorb that position and not, not, fill, not fill that with our existing, uh, you know, paraprofessionals that we, that we have uh, in, in, in district. So that would be a savings of a 1.0 you know, FTE position for a special education paraprofessional. Um, we do feel like we could reduce a, um, a professional staff member from a 1.0 to a 0.5 and achieve some savings. Um, the remaining items here, uh, we got some news that a potential savings on the out of district tuition front from um, you know, a student that might be be in a less expensive placement would net would yield about thirty thousand dollars savings again another change to the facility rental offset this is the amount that we've been steadily increasing over the last three years so there is some additional risk here but uh, we felt comfortable making that recommendation of increasing that facility rental revenue offset um, and that amount as I'll just would, would go up to actually eighty five thousand um, dollars in in total and that essentially helps offset the, the building and grounds budget and the maintenance uh, building maintenance line items and so forth um, this is an amount that we've we kind of play play with and analyze and look at past trends and next the you know, increase the teacher attrition retirement savings estimate so every year we have staff that either retire from the district or staff that we know will, will move on and and leave the district through a variety of, of reasons we try to estimate that amount um, and predict what that attrition or sa retirement savings will be uh, we did get indication in the, really as recently as the last couple of weeks that there'll be some additional retirements uh, that could yield some savings that we did not have a, know about previously so we felt comfortable taking a calculated risk I would say here and increasing increasing that uh, anticipated uh, savings from retirements and attrition um, this last amount here is somewhat of a balancer we need another twenty eight thousand seven hundred and sixty three dollars to achieve a balanced budget we feel through a variety of additional kind of mainly expense line items we talked a little bit about the you know legal and we're not you know not uh, making some adjustments there uh, some calculated adjustments um, you know the unemployment amount we've been doing a very good job minimizing our liability and unemployment over the last couple of years we've seen that the actual amount be under our budgeted amount um, over the last couple of years we hope that we, that would be achieved next year as well and other line items such as you know some you know, postage and so forth we would look to save and try to achieve the remaining 28,783 but those are essentially line items we would look at some discretionary spending you know reduce some line items back to levels that are closer to what the actuals maybe have been over the last couple of years 
to balance off the budget. So all in all, this would achieve the $452,486 or so we would need to achieve a balanced budget. Uh, the new positions that would be funded, as a, just a reminder, we originally asked for 3.9. This would achieve 3.0 of those positions. So that, that 0.5 reading teacher would, would unfortunately not be funded and we would achieve 0.6 of the desired 1.0 academic teacher. Um, we've talked all along throughout this process that the school adjustment counselor was a top priority um, at the high school and the special education elementary team chairperson has been a priority really for a number, a couple of years now would, at the elementary level would be funded and the point four school psychologist slash adjustment counselor at the bachelor school certainly continues to be a priority. You certainly heard, um, you know, the need for the student support services. You've heard from speakers this evening and that's certainly, I think you know why, why the, these positions are a top priority. So these would be funded in, in, in this approach. Um, some of the conclusions, uh, what does this budget do? It certainly allows us first and foremost to meet our contractual obligations with employees and employee unions. It, again, those additional staffing positions you just saw in the prior, prior slide to really address social and emotional learning needs of students, enhance um, our current in-district specialized programming to meet the needs of all identified students additional staffing to better achieve sound student teacher ratios at the high school that 0.6 FTE teacher will certainly help um, associated cost to properly operate and maintain the middle school and the high school campus as well as the three elementary schools so throughout the process you, you, you heard of us adjusting those line items operationally to achieve um, the adequate preventative maintenance measures and so forth um, includes level funding of operating budget for the five schools in the district it's not quite level funding there's a small level of restoration there so a slight correction to that that statement um, it's not quite level funding it but there's, there's, a, there's some small small idea small restoration but not full, not to the fullest extent that we desired and the budget allows the district to maintain level services while achieving some but not all of the nrps 2021 staffing requests and certainly we feel preserves the educational experience for students so some of these financial risks, I've, you know, these trends, I've, I feel like it's been a couple fiscal years now we've gotten to this point and I've just kind of, um, you know, there's sort of inherent risk with any type of school municipal budget that is certainly in existence. There's, there's a lot of variables at play, but I think these are highlights, some bullets to just remind you, us that there's certainly some, some risk involved and in, by making the adjustments that we're recommending this evening to balance the budget, there's certainly some additional risk involved with doing that. Uh, potential for additional outside and or a change in placements with increased costs um, in special education out of district tuition line item that is always the case it's a big variable one of the, probably the largest variable in a school department budget so that certainly exists reliance on some one-time projected carryover revenue this has been something that we've kind of fallen into that reliance over the last several fiscal years but it certainly does exist and is, is present in, in as we look to balance fiscal 2019 we we are um, relying on some carryover revenue in the transportation line item the circuit breaker offset the tuition prepayments is predicated upon that we would achieve a level of uh, prepayments with the funds available at the end of this fiscal year and again that kindergarten tuition line item um, offset as well the estimated teacher attrition savings may not be realized. You saw an increase to that. That's additional risk associated with that increase. Uh, again, we, we feel it's calculated risk, but there's certainly risk there. Limited ability to, for us to address emergency maintenance issues. So the elimination of extraordinary maintenance for the second or third straight year, as well as small capital line items, does limit our ability to, to be able to, to, to do this. And as you saw this year, it's always possible that the state budget may not fully fund circuit breaker revenue offset projection. So this assumes that we, that that program at minimum would be funded at a level of between 70 and 72%. And it could be a chance that could be less when everything is finalized and we would not know that until the end of June. And then you saw the food service program, uh, that performance can be difficult to predict, although it's done very, very well and made huge strides over the last few years. We are trending right now slightly below a break-even program, although I'm told we had a very good month of April. That, um, um, so there's always that risk there, and that was that attempt to add that $5,000 back in. You know, to eliminate that, there's added some, some associated risk with doing that. But again, I think the calculated risks, as we uh, discussed, um, otherwise I think it's fair to say the administration would not have been recommending them at the school committee budget workshop. 
So that being said, I'll certainly open up to comments. Um, this would be the budget motion that we would ask the school committee to, to make this evening. Um, the slide that I printed out at about 5.15 p.m. today after the, the, the changes, um, unfortunately I forgot to change that number, but I've changed it here on the slide. So the $30 million seven hundred forty six thousand and forty seven dollar oh four seven amount is what we would, is really what we're looking to make the motion on this evening it is about a three point eight percent increase which is would actually be the increase that we've had in the last two budget years so the three straight years in a row we have a budget that's three point eight percent higher than the previous than the current the current fiscal year a little over one point one million dollars higher than FY 18 so before I ask for comments and questions I want to thank um, Michael especially, his team, the entire administrative staff, the administrative team, uh, town officials, and everybody for coming together and getting us to a point where we can add some critical positions mm. that we feel are necessary and that the school district, you know, and that school children uh, need. Absolutely. It's not everything we wanted. It's, um, we're never gonna get everything we wanted. There are some critical positions we aren't filling I can tell you that at the um, budget workshop, the school committee was, uh, initially the um, administration was not recommending the teacher at the high school. The, at the budget workshop, the school committee was, was I'd say, pretty adamant that we add at least something to the high school because of the oversized uh, classes there. And the committee has, uh, the administrators pledged to add the .6 and also pledged to work towards doing whatever possible to make that a, a 1.0. So I thank them for that commitment. So with that, I'll open it up to questions and comments from the committee. Julie, anything? I don't think so. Scott? I always have something. Well, that's why I went to you. I should have gone to you. Keep it short. So <laughs> the only, what I would just say is, I mean, I think, I, I know that people want to try to keep the costs down when we can and hope for more money to come. But I just want to say again, we have an obligation every single year to educate the children in the district. And we can't wait for additional tax revenues to come. Some of the position, positions that we're finally able to fund have been on this list for at least one year, if not a couple of years. Mm -hmm. There are some that have been on there even longer that are still not being funded. And so as I see it, it's really an addition of 1.5, because in the cost reduction, we're losing 1.5 FT as well. So it's one and a half positions being created after no, no positions were created last year. And so. Um, I think we have that obligation. I appreciate the Board of Selectmen. I mean, a couple of them have come to the meetings and you know, have uh, expressed that they understand that these are needs. And this isn't primarily you know, getting more teachers. This is looking at the other aspect of education, the social emotional learning aspects. And to me, that's, Mr. Delaney talked tonight about what that means to parents that have a student that needs that support. It's, it also is a safety issue. I mean, after some of what's happened this year in this country, I think, saying that you know more than 800 students for one adjustment counselor is just not a safe position and so i think we all felt that this was a year we had to add that none of nobody wants to look back and say we regret something because we didn't find the money to add what we needed to do the you know the teacher at the elementary school about special education the team chairperson we've been talking about that as you know trying to directly address one of the major budget drivers that we have every year and so we're finally doing that, and I really hope that we can, you know, somehow even see what sort of savings we've had by, you know, that position. And hopefully next year we can say that, you know, we know that we've saved a couple hundred thousand dollars by finding a couple hundred thousand dollars this year. And so, um, I mean, that's my that's my general comments. I mean, it's we always want more. I'm, I'm sure there's lots of programs we want to do, but in general, I feel very very happy with the budget that we we're at right now. Jerry. Yeah, I agree with what Scott said, actually. I think it was well said. Um, I think the, admi the administration, the finance planning uh, team, and you know the Board of Selectmen, the members of the finance committee that are on that team did a good job, worked hard. Don't always agree, but we did come to, a, a, I would say, a fairly good compromise as to how we're going to get through the next fiscal year. Um, Michael, is that number, the slide had 30746 and the Handout has the, the motion has thirty million seven sixty one. It's four, yeah. 46. It's, it's forty six. Yeah. Okay. All right. The last slide didn't. It's, it's on the screen yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. And I just want to thank Michael um, for doing as always a great job. I mean, we have as much information. I think John was pointing it out today that our uh, budget 
uh, preliminary uh, budget uh, handbook is has as much information I think as anybody does and uh, uh, it's available to everybody so that they can go through it line by line dollar by dollar cent by cent so thank you Michael oh, thank you Jane of all the budgets that I've seen come through this is probably the best one just because we were able to add the necessary things without waiting eight or ten years right so. good point Bernard? Just very quickly, Mr. Chairman, I do. I, I, I want to echo what some of you said about acknowledging Michael's effort to um, to bring this uh, bring us to this point. Michael, thank you very much. You, you spent an inordinate amount of time, and I appreciate that. And and to all of you, the committee has, you know, has really put in a lot of a lot of hours. Whether it's finance planning team meetings, whether it's budget workshops, or these meetings with a pub public hearing on the budget and such. Um, and I appreciate the um, the respect that you show the administration's uh, efforts to to do our best work to to bring about the positions that we think we need to have for our students. So thank you all uh, for that. And as well, the finance planning team. Mr. Venezia said it, and I think it, it can't be overstated that uh, the town, um, the model of the finance planning team that this town has is, is a very effective one. And I think the, um, the fact that we're staying in constant communication with each other through the finance planning team has, has, um, has certainly been something that's beneficial to the district. So I want to acknowledge their, their efforts as well. Just like 30 seconds before we vote, I think if, if you could have attended the last budget workshop, you, you'd see, in my opinion, the way a superintendent school committee um, relationship is supposed to work. We weren't happy with the budget. Some of us weren't happy with the budget that the administration presented. We told the administration that. It didn't break, down, break out into a Donnybrook. No. It broke out into a discussion as to how we can get where we need to get. We compromised. They're going to work to try to get at 1.0 position at the high school. But when I talk about how well this committee works with the administration, that's the way it's supposed to work. It's not supposed to end up with people throwing rocks at each other at the end of a meeting. So I appreciate the administration listening to us, mainly me, kind of pop off at the last meeting. And I I've never heard you pop off before. And I appreciate how far we got toward what we wanted to, to accomplish. So with that, I will entertain a motion uh, on the 2019 fiscal 2019 budget. Um, Mr. Chairman, move that the school committee approve and hereby adopt the final fiscal year 19 school operating budget of $30,746,047, yep. which represents an increase of 3.8% or $1,127,502 over the... No, no. Oh, the slide. One, oh, I've got to read the slide, sorry. One, one, two. What $1,112,502 over the fiscal year 18 appropriation of, and that number's correct, right? $29,633,545. Yeah. Yep. Second. So we have a motion by Mr. Venezia, second by Ms. Kopke. Any further discussion? No, Hearing none. Blame them, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, eventually, they can't do anything for us. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Michael. Great. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Michael. Okay, next. Um, we need a motion to open our school choice hearing, which should be pretty quick. A uh, motion and a second to, so we can open our hearing on the school uh, choice vote. I make a motion to open up the school, school choice, school choice vote. Hearing. Thank you. Public hearing. We have a second, please. Second. Motion by Janine, second by Julie. Um, I think this is, a, I think we have to take an individual vote. Scott. We have to, I think we have to take an individual vote because it's Aye. a hearing. Jerry. Aye. Janine? Aye. Mel? Aye. <laughs> Julie? Aye. Okay, this is, uh, as I say, it'll be a quick hearing. Uh, North Reading has never been a school choice district um, for many reasons. No, for one reason, we don't feel that the program as it currently exists supports all of the students um, in the state and puts some students at a disadvantage. And I don't know if anybody here at this uh, table has a different opinion this year. But uh, you know we've never been a school choice district. And to explain what school choice is, is and there are many districts at, on the North Shore that are school choice. It allows students in your district to go to schools in other choice districts and allows you to accept for a tuition, correct? Correct. School choice students from other towns. However, the one thing I've always seen is the cost oftentimes doesn't balance out, and it's always a risk uh, in terms of the cost. And plus, it doesn't. Everybody can't. Um, everybody can't take advantage of that opportunity. That's right. They can't find a way to get. If they may want to go to a school in North Reading, 
but they can't get transportation to a school in North Reading or to Masco or to you know, Beverly High School or, or wherever it may be. So our, our district has always voted against being a school choice district. I don't know if any other committee members have any comments on it. No, during the time I've been here, we've never voted for it. And uh, that language is interesting, the language for the vote, but that's the language we've always used as well. Right. So. The motion um, has always been um, that North Reading uh, will not participate in school choice because the program as it is presently constructed ensures that the needs of some of the children in the Commonwealth cannot be met. And as I said, it basically because we do not fear, feel it, it ends up being an equitable, equitable program. So unless anybody has any comments, I'll entertain a motion. And I'd ask that you read the motion again. You're gonna close the hearing and then vote? Yes, yeah. close the hearing this time. We'll make a motion to close the hearing? No, we don't have okay. to, I can just close okay. the hearing. Okay. Do you want to read? Your yeah. No, you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, move that North Reading not participate in school choice because the program, as it is presently constructed, ensures that the needs of some of the children of the Commonwealth cannot be met. Second. Second. <laughs> take your pick. I'm going to take. I'm going to take Julie. There you go. Because she doesn't have any more motions to make. Um, so we have a motion by Ms. Venezia, a second by Ms. Kopke. Uh, that North Reading, again, for the next school year, will not participate in school choice. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Next, we have the superintendent's, sounds so impressive, mid-cycle formative assessment. <laughs> sounds like, what, what, is that what you eat for breakfast? <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> so, Janine, we'll turn this over to you. Yes. So, I brought all of the comments together and for um, the professional goal, Mr. Bernard um, rated himself on target uh, for the professional practice goal, which is to um, ensure that they, he leads the highest level of, of effective strategic leadership for North Reading Public Schools. Um, some of the feedback has been John's leadership qualities continue to grow and expand. He has completely made the transformation from a school administrator to the district administration. He also has clearly earned the respect of his peers. Our schools continue to aggressively move in the right direction under John. John has exceeded the goal by not only participating in professional development, but has taken a leadership role in various organizations, resulting in the superintendent providing outstanding strategic leadership. John has continued, has continuously shown and demonstrated excellent leadership. John continues to maintain close working relationships with other superintendents. He leads this group to further development, de develop key administrative, ad sorry, administrative skills. Lastly, Mr. Bernard goes above and beyond to meet this goal. He does not simply attend professional development programs. He has taken an active leadership role in the organizations which help to further his skills. Once again, Mr. Bernard gave himself an on target for the student learning goal. Feedback from the board. Mr. Bernard establishes an environment to support the administration, administration and student learning. He is a support for the teachers in the district and is constantly, consistently seeking out opportunities to improve. Building-based analysis of student achievement co um, continues to occur. This enables administration to identify growth areas of improvement. Identifying areas of support, like coaches, will enable the individualized instruction to areas of need. As a teacher, a principal, and now a superintendent, John has always worked to keep the students' learning and achievements in the forefront. John has exceeded this goal by working closely with his administrative team to create the conditions necessary for all the students to achieve the highest levels. Still a work in progress, but the activities being undertaken should have, move, should have us moving in the right direction. Again, Mr. Bernard gave himself <clears throat> on target for the district um, improvement goal number one, which is to um, Facilitate the execution of the school district's st strategic plan of NRPS 2021. 
Some of the feedback is that NRSP, NRPS 2021 is a solid plan. The lack of funding to fully implement continues to be disappointing. John has done an excellent job to facilitate the execution of the school district's strategic plan. The only setbacks have been due to budgetary constraints. John's work on the strategic plan is spot on for our district. Hopefully our budget will be able to see it to its fullest. The superintendent continues to advocate for much needed supports, services, personnel via the NRPS 2021. Don't undercut our true needs based on the town's revenue figures. Mr. Bernard has helped to create a thoughtful and comprehensive strategic plan and consistently works to imp implement it. While budgetary constraints may present challenges, he is able to still find ways to move forward with the most aspects of the plan. So, so you think that we all fill these out in a group, right? Because <laughs> they all basically say the same thing, yeah. but we didn't. We all fill these out individually. There was, a, there was no cheating. I no, I, I, you. I did copy Janine's paper. Oh, great. <laughs> no, no, no. no, you didn't, because I didn't fill it out. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the budget that we just passed right. is wonderful. Right. That it, it, we got it passed, so kudos again to Mike. Um, the district goal number two is to actively participate in the comprehensive review and update of the school district's emergency operations plan, EOP. And he gave himself on target on that as well. I think he's being modest on most of his grading. The emergency operations plan created and presented at, was a comprehensive and well thought out document. Mr. Bernard worked efficiently, effectively with community leaders to define the roles and responsibilities of all parties in each situation. Through the EPO, a thorough EPO, sorry, was created and implemented um, as it will occur in the future. This is a very important document as it, as it enables both the school and public safety personnel to deal with the emergency situations effectively. John, working with the public safety personnel, has completed a strong and easy to follow procedure for the district's EOP. John has done an excellent job of implementing a comprehensive emergency operations plan. And lastly, good progress being made here, but more needs to be done. Co cooperation with the law enforcement appears to be solid. This needs to be a focus area moving forward. The district improvement goal number three, the superintendent will work to increase the use of social media and other technologies to serve the methods of um, communication and um, he gave himself on target on this which is under if I, I believe so um, comments lack of presence on Facebook however the school com members have school committee members have more than made up for this <laughs> Twitter is being used effectively by the ad mm -hmm. um, administrative team and the websites are good but could be better looking forward to see the app which is being Presented tonight. 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 Right. Oh. Continues to do an excellent job. Some work still to be done. Social media is a good and bad thing. John's use of social, social media avenues has been well disciplined. This new app sounds exciting. John continue, continues to use social medi media to engage the community. Mr. Bernard frequently uses many different media to communicate information. The app for North Reading will hopefully be a great way to bring information together. Though not specifically noted in this section, it bears mentioning that Mr. Bernard creates a very informative newsletter on the top, on top of communicating what else is going on in the schools. One suggestion in this area would be to balance providing information with overwhelming and sometimes multiple messages are communicated in a very short period of time. Additionally, this goal is a about the use of social media, not only by Mr. Bernard, but with in the dis district, and it would be useful to see how other in the districts are using the tools which Mr. Bernard so effectively navigates. The district improvement goal number four um, will serve as an active partner to in the development of the digital lear learning initiative in a strive to meet the objectives of the 21st century learning experience. He gave himself on target. Comments, Mr. Bernard has been a re relentless advocate for digital learning in North Reading. He has helped to 
Prioritize. Thank you. Pri Prioritize. Thank you. Then you go on. <laughs> <laughs> the initiatives and support with personnel programs and focus. Mr. Bernard works well with the digital le leadership team in North Reading and the results are often shared publicly so the community is aware of the improvements of this area. John sees and appreciates the value of technology education. Our students continue to engage in meaningful technology experiences. I'm stuttering over these words. John's understanding of the need to grow in this area is commendable. He, with the support of his staff, has led the community into a computer technology-based world that continues to grow. John has done an excellent job of implementing and developing digital learning initiatives. Based on the recent presentation by um, Dr. Downs, the district has taken strides in this area. Great job. Huge strides in this area. That was my comment, so I know. Huge strides. I hope you put huge in there because I had the word huge. All, ca all capitals, too. And yeah, I don't, all capitals. And yeah. I don't use that word very often, if you know what I mean. No. <laughs> because if someone else uses it all the time. Go ahead. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz? <laughs> huge. Okay. Huge. Um, district uh, improvement goal number five. The superintendent will lead, co-lead, or otherwise participate in the social-emotional learning activities that serve and address the social and emotional needs of the students, which we just heard Mr. McMahon, um, yes, McManus. Yes, yeah. McManus um, speak about. Once again, he gave himself on target on this, but I think it needs to be higher. Um, committee feedback. I am seeing great emphasis focused on social and emotional learning, another area in which we are heading in the right direction, but yet being held back due to lack of funding. There seems to be an increase for more social social and emotional needs every year, though we do a good job monitor, monitoring, monitoring it, I can't say it. It will be great if the budget would better allow for staffing in this area correctly. Mr. Bernard supports social emo emotional learning objectives and improvements have been made, but there's have been, but many have been due to great people in North Reading. This is an area where additional staffing should be prioritized in the future to truly address the needs of the students. District improvement goal number six. The superintendent will facilitate the development. Am I cutting your pictures off? What? Okay. That's right. Uh, um, will facilitate the development of the North Reading Parent University to further engage the community and parents on school-aged children on topics of interest and relevance. And <coughs> it doesn't show, but I'm assuming it's marked on target. Okay, um, the feedback. This was a home run for Mr. Bernard. He did an outstanding job with the Parent University developing, developing a diverse list of offerings which attracted an equally diverse group of attendants. He was able to have it all financed privately and ran without a hitch, or at least that's what it appeared in the public eye. It was a remarkable event supported by the community. Parent University was well attended and the attendees had positive feedback to share. The Parent University is and was an exciting idea. It was very informative and helpful. What a wonderful platform for the parents. Outstanding accomplishment initiated and carried out by the superintendent with the collaboration of many contributors from the school district. From all reports, a huge success. Looking for better and bigger next year. I can't believe I used that word twice. <laughs> huge. You're huge. Can you say that again? Yes. Um, there was, do you want me to, that little, uh, do you want? Mr. Chen, I just want to remind you that Julie and I can't vote on anything after midnight. We're almost <laughs> just, just, you know. Okay, yeah. So all in all, at least I, from my opinion, um, I think that he underscored himself. I think he does a phenomenal job, and I believe I'll let everyone else speak for him, but those are my comments. I'd give him a contract extension and a raise. <laughs> Well, we'll get to that. I, I, um, I think John is on target and maybe ahead of target on some of these. I think there are a few things that there are programs that are in place that have to work through the system before we, you know, before the two years are up, uh, before we can, but, but I do think that um, 
I, I look at the digital learning plan, I mean, and I look at the, the um, uh, parent university, and I also look at the focus on social and emotional learning, and uh, you know, those three things alone uh, make me extremely confident in the leadership of this district. Julie? I agree with everything you just said. I think we continue to be fortunate to have you here, Thank and you. Um, I'm hoping that you'll be here in the years to come, because I think you're an advocate for our students, our staff, and um, I'm pleased that you're here. Thank you. Scott? Uh, again, I, I agree. I'm very happy to you know, serve this committee with you. I think you're organized. You're on top of things. You, you put the work in, but more than that, I mean, I think you have great instincts on different things. I think you know where, not just where we, where things are now, but where we need to go. And I think you're constantly trying to make improvements, which I think you need to be able to do in this position to keep ahead of the curve. So I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Terry? John, you know, I think you're doing a great job. I know I you're doing know a great that. job, but I also want to repeat what somebody said earlier tonight. It's, it's a great team you have with Absolutely. Patrick and Michael. So I think the three of you guys working together have really accomplished a lot. I love the way you guys um, work together and, you know, and, uh, and, and rely on each other. So uh, good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. So to that end, um, the negotiations we had tonight with Mr. Bernard. Could, could it, I make a comment? Oh, go ahead. Okay. That if you could, I just I want to pick up on what Jerry. Thank you, Mr. Webster, for allowing me to do that. But what Mr. Venezia said is so true. I I enjoy wonderful, um, wonderful, wonderful support, wonderful talent, um, and an incredible work ethic from the people that um, I rely very heavily on, and they are namely Patrick and Michael. Um, but the entire administrative team. Um, Cynthia Conant has been a wonderful addition to this district. Dan Downs as Director of Digital Learning. We have, we have fantastic staff, faculty, wonderful kids. Um, this, is, this is a terrific place to work. I look forward to coming to school every, I, I still say I go to school, 32 years into it. I go to school, I don't go to work. Um, and it's, it's a very um, advantageous, advantageous position to be in to say that you can enjoy coming in here every day. But um, it really is about the people and I appreciate very much the um, the, the, the sincerely strong support that I've gotten from uh, from this committee over the years. It, um, it means more than I could ever express to you, and I, I just want you to know how much I appreciate that. And thank you for your, your very generous um, feedback, and I will, um, I will take that all into consideration as I continue to, to move forward with, um, with everyone to make this district the best that it can be. So thank you. Scott. One, one more thing. Well, I, I just think it's worth mentioning the hours that Mr. Bernard puts in. I don't think people realize that. I mean, when I, we do policy subcommittee at 7 a.m., he's been here for an hour and a half already most of the time. You know, I mean, he's, well, he's at, at no, he's here at <laughs> night. He's here for school committee. He is here for school events. He's going to CPAC meetings. I mean, he, it's amazing the amount of time that he puts in. I mean, he's here early. He's here late on a, and it's not just once every couple of weeks when we have a school committee meeting, it's regularly. Like if I go to something at night, he's there. He's at the sports sporting events. He's at the maskers. And so it's just, it's just amazing how much time he puts into it. It's a very good point, but the beer's not getting any colder. Uh, so to that end, we uh, negotiated. We actually talked to John tonight. We've been talking over the last few executive sessions. His contract currently expires in, uh, at the end, of fiscal, in the end of fiscal 2020. We'd like to, so that's two years. We'd like to expand his con extend his contract by a year uh, tonight to end at the end of fiscal year 2021. Um, also, uh, over the next two years, provide John with a, an increase of 3% cost of living per year each of the next two years. And the third year, 2021, will be negotiated at a later date. And those are the, the, main, um, the main points of his new, or his, ex his extended slash revised contract. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to extend Mr. Um, Bernard's contract to 2000. 2021 and to revise the terms of the contract. Well, that's June of 30th of 2021, right? That Correct. would be the date, right? Correct. Okay. So moved. Motion by Scott. Second. A sec second by Janine. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, John. You. Thank you. Revise the terms of his contract. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to really blast through the next items on the agenda here. Be very quick, Mr. Chairman. We have both the SEAM Collaborative FY19 budget and the North Shore 
Education Consortium, FY19 budget, both important partners with us in, in our special education efforts. Mr. Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any opposition to me speaking about them collectively? No. Okay. No. Um, so, as you know, um, the board, um, the, the committee appoints me, uh, has appointed me uh, to serve as the district's representative of the board of directors of both the um, SEAM Collaborative and the North Shore Education Consortium. And as a member, I think the one of my uh, obligations as, a, as a, a member is to report to you periodically on the functions of those two um, co education collaboratives and, and in part um, is to present you the um, adopted budget for each school. So that's what you have um, as part of your packet. The one thing I would highlight for, um, for the community and for the committee is that by being a member of these collaboratives um, and um, utilizing their skills, skills as, as um, special education collaboratives for, to the benefit of students that we are not able to educate in district is um, we enjoy a, a pretty significant financial savings too. And I would, I would tell you that um, we, are, we are projecting um, a savings that would um, be in the area of $90,000 at the same collaborative and in, and in the area of about $25,000 savings at the North Shore Education Consortium. So I think it's an important, you know, while we don't let that override our, um, our decisions around um, educating students with special needs, it's really about what's the best program for them. It is a, you know, a byproduct that I think is not uh, to be overlooked that there is a financial savings as well. So I want to highlight that. It's beneficial to us being part of both these uh, organizations. Yes. Mr. Buckley. Do you have a comment quick? No, I, I think, it, I'm going to. <laughs> I can speak slowly if you like. <laughs> no, I, I, think it, I think it's important to have the collaboratives. And in the budget, it, I did note that the number of students in the collaboratives has gone down this year. And I know we brought this at the budget, budget workshop. Uh, there's more private placement, uh, private placements and uh, residential placements. And I do hope that with the new position that we've funded now for next year, that there is a lot of effort on trying to develop programs here maybe trying to develop programs with potentially with the collaboratives or making suggestions to the collaboratives to try to be able to bring more students back into these programs and maybe even find some placements that if, if there's not something at SEAM or at another collaborative that we could maybe even educate them within our district at some point in time. So that's my only comment. Right, and I think that's one of the goals of that new elementary right. special ed coordinator is to see if we can develop programs that years down the road we can start bringing in students, tuition students, that would help our, um, on our cost basis. There's no action required on those, right? The budget? Not, sir. Okay. No. Any other questions, comments? I am, yes, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay, next we have the, um, the presentation. Mr. Bernard, uh, one of the things he has talked about and he's worked on is developing a new North Reading School District mobile app. Really? And I'll turn it over to John to present it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I just have a very, a very short video um, tonight to introduce to you um, where, where things are with the uh, development of an app for um, the North Reading Public Schools. And before I, I take you through the video, um, there are two things I would want to mention in advance. The first is, is that what, what I'm going to show you right now is really intended to be just an illustration. It does not mean that this is actually what you're, you're going to see in totality, nor is it necessarily the, the content only that would be restricted to, to the app. But um, so that's point one. Point number two is, um, you know, at times I, I need to recognize my own limitations, my own weaknesses, and where I need assistance. And I want to acknowledge um, publicly that I received significant assistance from, um, from a student at the high school, Michael Tyrell, who you all no, because he comes and is a member of the student representatives of the school committee. Michael is very talented in this area, and he's done an awful lot of work um, both with me and for me um, to get us to the point where we are soon going to be introducing the app as something that people will be able to download and utilize as a resource um, for information about the district. And um, and Dan Downs, our director of digital learning, too, has been a very good, um, very good resource both for me and for Michael when I have kind of tasked him with the kinds of things I was looking for. So this video, as you can see up on the screen, runs for a little bit of over a minute and I'm gonna, it's it, there's no there's no audio to it I'm just going to kind of walk you through what um, a user would would experience when they when they have the app um, available on their phone so the screen that you see up there is is uh, intended to be a smartphone screen and so when you clicked on the app this is what you would find and it would be an instruction you could either hit the, the district website 
or if you swipe to the right, you could then find all of these resources on that first swipe. And if you were to select one of those, you would get a series of in, uh, pieces of information. I know the athletic schedule has long been one of those things that it was not always easy to find. Um, you had to go through a series of clicks through um, myscores.com to get the athletic schedule. That's something that I think is a, is a pretty significant improvement here. Um, what you see next is a swipe for the high school. And so right now, the content that we've identified are the teacher pages. This is you know, to be able to access any teacher in the high school um, and their particular teacher pages that the students often find assignments on. Parents can find other information about their child's classes and such, the principal's corner. You know, we've identified some resources for parents like the student handbook, the program of studies, um, all of our core curriculum through the academics, again, the program of studies. And what is it there about North Reading High School that we want to, we want to highlight um, through the app could be found here as well. And then you're going to just see a series of, of swipes that would bring you to each of the five schools of the district. So here's the middle schools page. You know, right now the Washington, D.C. trip is of interest. So the, the information would be readily available there. The, the three elementary schools look, you know, pretty similar. And there's a demo here that you'll see for, um, for the athletics content, too, um, in just a moment. So right here, what we've loaded is um, you can find the team standings. Okay, so how are our teams doing in the current season? All right, so that's that one, one click. So you, you, do, you would just scroll it up and down. Michael did the video for me. He's demonstrating with his finger swipe. I just want to go back. That went a little bit faster than I would have liked it. Uh, right here. So you would, you would similarly get a schedule an up-to-date schedule, and, and, and that's, I think, important because, you know, things change, weather dependent, cancellations, whatever it is, that schedule will be, will be updated, and um, it'll be very relevant for anybody that's looking to find out where our teams are playing in any of the three given seasons. So essentially, that's it. That's great. So pretty soon, we will be un announcing the unveiling, um, and you'll be able to down download the app with a little North Reading icon right there. So can we ask a couple of questions? Yeah. You can. So, well, now that you're not here, we can ask. No, one is, I didn't say anything for lunch menus up there. We can add content in. Again, this was just to be an illustration, but yeah, we could have, we could have the food services department could have a link. To me, I think that yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah, those are the kinds of things that I need to hear. And then, and as right, when we do the unveiling too, you know, we can add things in that people are particularly interested in. Who's going to maintain it to update all the information? Well, it's it's we we're not quite sure yet how that's going to happen. It could be we're not sure what content will be merged with our website. So when a website is updated with any kind of information, is is the app pulling the information directly or not? Because I guess one of the so for example, you have the Washington trip for the middle school, for the high school you might have the um, when the maskers music when they're doing the yeah. musical you yeah. want to have that. But that's we, so we have to figure out a, pro a process to make sure that that's done, right? Okay. Yeah, I think there's, there's, there's a place for kind of those, um, those things that comes, come and go, like you said, like a play. You know, might be the... Um, like a one-time post program, program right, yeah. Exactly, yeah. like the program yeah. we use to purchase a ticket. You know, yeah. that, those kinds of yeah. things. And then it can come down when the, when the play is over. Some questions? Is there some sort of integration with Plus Portals? Yes. Okay. We, yeah, that's... That's actually been improved on for the websites too. Okay. Um, the students were having trouble getting access to that in the building. Okay. Um, but we think the plus plus portal, much like the teacher page feature, should be a, you know kind of because even as bit. parents, like it would be cool exactly. if there was just a one click right. off of the app yep. to just tie that together. That would be good. So once you put this out, then you'll you'll be soliciting feedback. Exactly. Yeah, much like we do with most things. We okay. Do. Now we, uh, what do you like? What don't you like? What do you think needs to be added in? I think. You know, provided that we're able to do that and it's feasible to do so, yeah, I will do that. Sure, I know you had a list of features you wanted to see on the app. Could you? Uh, I'm, I'm dying to get out of here. I mean, so <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Janine, anything That's on this? Pretty quick. What? <laughs> no, I mean, what, what's, what's the anticipated date of, in, of completion? Um, I think it's this month. I'm okay. anticipating it'll be May. Yeah, our goal all along is to have it out by the end of the school year. And I think we'll, we'll, well it'd be good to like if we could get some feedback right away, right. and then perhaps the you know, a, summer, yeah. You know yeah, exactly. a true unveiling in September, right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Great. A soft rollout. Thank, Thank you, John. You. Thank Looks you very good. Much. Okay.
Next we have, I lost my agenda. It should be the minutes. 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 Okay, I've reviewed all the minutes. I can tell you that there was, I found a mistake on one of them. Uh-oh. But not, so, but the first one, the um, budget workshop for April 4th, 2018, um, that looks fine to me. If anybody, unless anybody has any changes, um, I'll take a motion to approve. Motion to approve open session budget workshop April 4, 2018, minutes. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion? All's in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? One abstention. One abstention. I was not at that meeting. Oh, Julie was not there. Okay, so four zero one abstention. Okay, next we have executive session from April 9th, 2018. Move to accept the executive session minutes, April 9, 2018. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, on the next one, I have a correction on, uh, this is the April 9th, 2018 open meeting. On the second page, um, the last comment under the budget hearing, it says Mr. Andy Schultz gave input on the future income from the new Pulte is P-U-L-T-E. P-U-L-T-E, Pulte Homes. So that just proves I read these, which is important. The next set of minutes I read will be my first. Oh, <laughs> we'll see that. With that, can I have a motion to accept an amended version of the April 9th, 2018 open session minutes? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Next, we have um, the budget workshop open session from May 2nd, 2018. Move to accept the open session budget workshop of May 2nd, 2018. Second. Motion is second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Next, uh, we have no budget update at this time. We have no staffing update at this time. Uh, we do have bids and donations. and. We would not want to deprive Julie of giving us her last reading of bids and donations. So, Julie? Who wants that job next? I, I, might, I might apply yeah, for it. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation in the amount of $1,000 from the Compass Group to be awarded to a graduating senior of the class of 2018. Second. Motion is second for $1,000 from the Compass Group for a scholarship. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation in the amount of $1,600 from the North Reading Music Boosters to cover the cost of the maskers' performance at Six Flags, New England. Oh, second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second for the North Reading Music Boosters donation of $1,600. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for enrichment activities costing $1,794.50 and teacher appreciation activities $317.10 for a grand total of $2,111.60 from December 2017 through February 2018. Second. So we have a motion to accept $2,111.60. Oh, I was going to say from the. J. Turner Hood Elementary Parents Association. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, as usual. Thank you very much to our generous groups and individuals for helping us with the school system. Okay, next we have subcommittee updates. Athletic subcommittee, we discussed basically the same old, same old, the, uh, the new facility, which um, we're still getting the scheduling down. I, there, was a, there was an issue this week where they were locked, should have been open, but we're, we're working on that. There's gonna be a mobile application where uh, the doors can be locked and unlocked through a mobile app, and there was some training done on that today. Um, and hopefully that'll be up and running within the next few days and we'll get the scheduling um, sorted out. The goal, is the, the bathroom should now be open for all activities, games, not practices, games and other events at the entire athletic complex. I know there, there was a comment on the 
community connection about with was an open one. Yes, time. I have. I've dealt with that. Who, if somebody has questions about that, who do they? Who do we direct them? To? Well, they're probably gonna. You're probably gonna get better answers from either calling the um, the Parks and Rec Department, Marty Tilton, or calling the or calling the school. I don't think you're gonna get an answer on Facebook. No, that's, no, I know. That's my guess. But just didn't know who. Right. So it would be. I mean, school. obviously for the uh, Marty Tilton is. Activities it would probably be either Dave. Dave Johnson, Johnson or. For like Parks and Rec, it would be. Right, Marty Tilton. Marty Tilton. Yeah. yeah. Athletic office at the high school. And right. You've got to get it coordinated. It's gonna. It'll, right. It'll get coordinated. I mean. Right. There's so much going on down there. We don't want to leave it open all the time, but we want to be open when there's any games or. Yeah. Um, or other major events going on down there. Um, the other thing we talked about, I, I did a little um, kind of punch list of things down in the whole athletic complex area that need a little attention. And I think basically um, whatever needs to be done is going to get done within the next few months down there in terms of maintenance and a few other things. Um, they're, all, they're all minor issues. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing major. The building itself is functioning. Right. The building's fine. Um, also, we discussed the batting cages, which are ready. Beautiful project done without any... Uh, Taxpayer money, twenty-six thousand dollars, I believe, from um, donations and gifts um, to build, put facility. that batting cage together for both use for both softball and baseball. Fit in there just perfect, right? From right. The baseball fields. It looks great, um, Jerry. That was about it, right? Yeah, I mean that and the fact that the revolving account, we should have a, uh, All a right. plus. We, we're in the black yeah, as we in the black. roll over into next fiscal, fiscal year, so right. that's good. Yep. Um, finance planning team, we've met three times since our last meeting. And the result of it was the budget we approved tonight. There's basically nothing else to be said on that um, with that subcommittee. So that's it for the reports. Um, next, we have uh, administrative report, Mr. Bernard. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Two things to highlight for you. Um, I provided you some, some good news, um, both for um, the Batchelder School and the Hood School. Um, the Batchelder School um, Explorer Vision team um, that had been a regional winner was selected as a first place winner and we will be traveling to Washington, D.C. Um, I believe it's the weekend of June um, 9th and 10th and the student participants will each receive a $10,000 savings bond. Um, this is not yeah. the first time that this has happened for an Explorer Vision team at the Batchelder School. Um, but it's quite an accomplishment. I had the pleasure of uh, receiving an invitation to attend the, the regional award ceremony that was held at the Batchelder School back um, in April. Um, and I have to tell you, it is unbelievable to see what third graders are doing, really. I mean, I attached for you um, some, some correspondence that I received from one of the teachers at the Batchelder School, Mr. Cassell, for you to see um, the, some of the projects that the students came up with with their parent-teacher um, coaches and it really it's remarkable so congratulations to them I've taken the liberty to extend an invitation for them to come to the June 11th school committee meeting to be recognized by the committee so I hope that um, that's okay but uh, you'll have an opportunity to um, extend uh, personal congratulations to two folks um, at that meeting on June 11th so John just one quick question yes are they all going to Washington DC it's the it's the one if you look at the back it's the I swamp uh, project is the one that is the it's that's the team Okay. It's, I think it's the last, um, third to the last page in the packet. Um, it's in the box there on the left. I swarm, excuse me, I swarm, the I swarm team. So they are going to D.C.? For They've the been invited. I can't tell you, I can't confirm that every family is able to go, but they have all, that is the team that has been invited to go. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting. And then the second thing is um, Mrs. Whitney Cleary, um, who was at the meeting that the, um, when the Hood School hosted the school committee, um, she's, does, she's done some really wonderful work with the uh, Makerspace program at the, at the Hood School and was recognized. Um, she was in the running for the top STEM teacher in the state of Massachusetts by the New England Patriots uh, STEM Teacher of the Year program. Um, but she certainly has, is very proud to be one of the five top teachers named, and the, school, the Hood School will receive a uh, $1,000 check um, to be used towards supporting STEM initiatives at the um, at the little at the, excuse me at the Hood School. So congratulations to uh, to Mrs. Clary not only for the work that she's done but for having been recognized. Um, it's pretty pretty nice thing. Did we have her here on the 11th too to publicly recognize her I if, she's available? if she's available? I mean, I know she's not related to the batch thing, but that might sure. be a nice thing to publicly recognize her at, at I will, the school. Community. I will do that tomorrow. I'll ask. Uh, okay. I'll reach out to her. She. She and I have been corresponding about her, her process, and I think she was disappointed, but I thought it was wonderful what she made yes. to. So I will. I'll extend an invitation to her for June 11th. That's great. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. And I skipped over the subcommittee um, updates. Uh, we have a finance planning team meeting 
on May 24th, members to be determined since the um, leadership on the board will change. Uh, there's a NORCAM board meeting on May 24th, membership to be determined. Uh, athletic subcommittee at the superintendent's conference room, we will have at least one new member on the athletic subcommittee, unless we can get Jerry in on a waiver. <laughs> and then uh, the SSBC will meet on June 12th. Mr. Chairman, I think the school committee might want to consider appointing a replacement on that, just so you have the, the voting member, even though there's not much left to do. Right, we'll have to do that at the next, yeah. at the next meeting. Yeah. Because Jerry right now is the school committee appointed member SBC. to the SSBC. I think it would be advantageous. Even if it's not I think right. they are working to try to make Jerry a, 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 not a member of the committee, but he can no longer be the SSBC, I mean the school committee representative. And we've done the administrative report. Uh, correspondence, John, anything? No, sir. Future business. Uh, schedule a meeting after the election. Do we want to talk about it now or not? No, the meeting, that'll be May 21st. Okay, we're not going to do... Because last time I think we I met we before to. to do no. committees. You no. Did, you did do that, but you don't have you to. You don't have to. You can do it at a regular meeting, and Mr. Bernard takes over the chairmanship, and then we appoint the, we vote for the new chairman. And we did last year. You know, yeah. We never, that was, a, that was the first year we've done that. Yeah. I think there was like a me. reason that. I think there was a reason we, we did it. You didn't want me in public or something? No, but <laughs> I think, <laughs> but. Might have been. Yeah. We can. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, we can just do it at the May okay. 21st meeting. That's our next meeting where we'll welcome um, two members. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming it'll be Ms. Boutwell and Mr. McGowan. Um, and we look forward to good luck working tomorrow. with them. Yes, good luck, Enjoy. Diana, tomorrow. Um, June 4th is the town meeting. We will meet at 6.30, half an hour before the town meeting starts. And the town meeting will be at 7 in the superintendent's uh, conference room. June, uh, the, June 11th is our regular meeting at the distance learning lab and June 25th at the distance learning lab. I should point out the May 21st meeting is at the little school. Correct. That'll be a final um, presentation from the schools this year. And also uh, graduation is June. June 8th. June 8th. 6.15. June 8th, 6.15. School committee members um, who can't attend try to get there around quarter to six. 5.45. Yeah, 5.45 to six. Main Street. There's not a lot of parking, so I like to try to get there early. And we get to lead the parade behind uh, behind the administration. So and we don't get to wear any caps and gowns, though. We just wear. Sunny and 75. That's right. Oh. Sunny and 75. That's really nice. Jerry, are you coming? No. Jerry, <laughs> Mr. Webster, could I suggest to you maybe a photo for the trip? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, we definitely got to get a photo. Really, this is a really nice trilogy. So with that, um, I'll entertain yeah. a motion to adjourn. And I think I know who should make that motion. And I know who should second it. Go ahead, Jerry. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to adjourn. Do I have second. a second? <laughs> Motion by Mr. Venezia, second by Ms. Kopke for the final time. I do, I do not agree with them with ending because I don't want them to leave. So <laughs> I, I'm opposed to this motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Oh, we have four to one on adjourn. Thank you very much, everybody.